I'm afraid I have to choose between my life or hers. Eight heart-stopping confessions from Reddit. I'm 27 and just cried because I wasn't invited to my sister's birthday dinner. I work nights, so I told them all a week ago that I couldn't go to anything after 4 p.m. on Saturday, but that I was off Sunday or could do breakfast Saturday. Instead of answering me, I was ghosted until I found out tonight from my mom that she, turning 25, booked the dinner at a restaurant for 5 p.m. tonight. I called to ask if she'd be willing to push it to tomorrow and she told me no. I'm single and have no real friends, family means everything to me and I always always put them first when making plans. I didn't even choose the restaurant for my birthday, hell they didn't even remember mine until I called them the night before asking if they'd eat with me. I've tried to leave the state and start a new life for myself but it's never worked out, I feel like I'll end up being alone forever. Today, I got a tattoo in honor of my oldest male friend. He unknowingly healed me from my trauma. He's my oldest friend. I've known him all my life, and he was my first friend in life. We are both 27. We drifted apart for about 5 years, and in that time, I was assaulted by someone else. We eventually reconnected, and he was the first guy to say nothing is wrong with me. He was my first love, and I'll always love him no matter what. He doesn't know that his kindness stopped my pain. Today, I got more than you'll ever know. Abbreviated onto my wrist, because when we were younger, he used to always tell me I'll always care about you more than you'll ever know. Thanks for letting me share my story. He's the one guy I'll always love. My girlfriend is a burden and I'm really close to ending our relationship. Me 19 and my girlfriend 21 have been together for around three and a half years and I simply see her as a burden now. Since I started dating her, my life has been 95% about her because of her depression and I'm almost 100% sure I would be happier and more successful without her. I don't have time to study or spend with my family. I cut all my friends from my life because she needs my attention 24-7. We hadn't been intimate in over a year, she's just a friend that I kiss, when she accepts it. The problem is, I'm 100% sure she'll try to end her life if I break up with her, I know because she already tried twice with medicine both times I tried. I'm not really good mentally speaking and the fact that every fucking time I try to talk to her about me she says something like welcome to the team, I'm feeling this for years now, by the way, I have nobody else to talk to. I'm afraid I have to choose between my life or hers. I am really unhappy being a mother. I'm 33 years old and I have two kids ages 5 and 3. My husband and I agreed that we didn't want kids and I was on birth control when the first one happened. I cried for months and we even set up an appointment at an abortion clinic. Obviously we, mostly me since he was of the your body your choice mindset, decided against it. The second happened because of peer pressure and people telling us our first would be spoiled if we only had one. He has turned out to be the world's best father. He genuinely enjoys spending time with them, playing with them, cuddling with them, etc. I'm very happy for him that we didn't end up with a kid-free lifestyle because he was obviously meant to be a dad. I, on the other hand, am not meant to be a mother. Don't get me wrong, I love them, I feed them, help them with their homework play with them, and all of the things I'm supposed to do. I just don't enjoy it. I'm a very solitary person. I enjoy reading and watching movies in peace. My husband is the only person I'm okay with being around all of the time because we can sit on the couch and cuddle while we do our own things. The kids aren't like that. They are always there. Everything feels like a chore when they're involved and I know I can only fake it so much. I'm constantly scared that they are going to notice my struggles and aren't going to think I love them or they are going to need therapy or be screwed up, and I constantly feel guilty for not being the best parent I can be like their father is. I feel like he knows how I feel and feels like he has to pick up the extra slack and be super dad and I hate that. People say things like I know some days are hard but enjoy this time with them because in 10 years they won't want to be around you at all. But it's hard every day and all I feel when people say that is anticipation for the time when they don't want me around. Looking back, I know cancelling that appointment was the best thing for my husband. And I personally don't ever think I could go through with it even knowing what I do now, but sometimes I picture our life had I never gotten pregnant. 
I'm a terrible person. I tested positive for COVID-19 and I am still going to work. I work in food service. I have had COVID-19 three times and I have no more paid time off because of the last time I had COVID-19 earlier this year. I cannot afford to miss more work so I'm just washing my hands and trying not to breathe on the food I'm preparing, my co-workers or anything else in the kitchen. If I took off work and quarantined again I would be financially ruined and probably not be able to pay my rent. I'm still financially recovering from the last time I had to quarantine and the expenses that caused, so I can't do this again. I don't know what to do or why there isn't any help for anyone who keeps getting this virus and can't work from home. It's very clear that the people in power do not care about people like me. I also don't know why I've gotten covered 19 three times. I literally barely do anything other than work and shop for groceries. I even changed stores after the second time because I was afraid the store was where I caught it twice. Anyway, that's my confession. I am knowingly sick with COVID-19 and preparing food because it's either that or eviction and my life being ruined. I think people who were homeschooled are the weirdest people on earth. Everyone I met who was homeschooled has some sort of bizarre personality or comes from some messed up family with obscure beliefs. Most of the ones I met lacked social maturity as in they had strange personalities. Also, in some cases their parents removed them from public school because their belief system did not align with the school's curriculum. They were anti-vaxxers, far-right, super-religious, or maintained some sort of conspiracy belief about public education. Anytime someone tells me that they were homeschooled or they homeschool their kids I feel really bad for them and the kids involved. Somebody replied, my sister-in-law pulled her son out of public school because the teachers had recommended some behavioral and learning evaluations that he desperately needed. The kid was physically violent, a total bully, even at his young age, and he was developmentally behind. Instead of getting him the help he needed, she homeschooled, which basically meant doing nothing. The kid ended up not ever getting help became a druggie and lived literally in a van down by the river, and found some equally messed up girl to live in his van with him. They drove around when they could steal or panhandle gas money, and they maybe showered once a month. Massive untreated mental health issues and addiction issues. Most of this could have been sidestepped if she had admitted her son had problems and got him the support and services he needed. But nothing is wrong with my son, he's just different, creative or unique. I'm losing my faith in my religion. I am a Muslim, but I am losing my faith in Islam. It terrifies me a bit because I have been taught how good Islam is and how ideal the Prophet Muhammad was my entire childhood, but I know better now. It is taking me a lot to unlearn about my faith. I have no respect for a religion which does not recognize women's rights. Islam legalizes no age limit for girls to be married and it views women as a subclass of man but I don't know how to reveal these thoughts to my family. My parents are religious and I know they won't be happy to hear my thoughts. I have lost all attraction to my husband. It's been five years since we started dating and two years since we married. The past few months have been devastating for the both of us, with him losing his job, losing his license and being an overall slob. He got fired from his job because he got hooked on this anti-job stuff and thought capitalism is the root of all evil. I'm not denying that it's false, however he left his very well-paying job because he doesn't want to be a cog in the machine. So we sold the house and moved to an apartment to deal with a major loss in income, and I had to pick up the slack. A month later he started drinking, like, really badly. I'm talking whiskey with cereal and vodka to wash it down. Well he got a DWI charge and lost his license. So now I have to drive the both of us around, to work, to visit friends, family, doctor's appointments, get groceries and everything else. And on top of that, our intimate life has just been knocked over, he's become so unhealthy that he can barely stand oral without getting all huffy and puffy and needing a break, even when I do all the work he's getting more exhausted than I, let alone the pathetic amount he unloads, and the disgusting taste. Just, over the past couple of weeks after work, I would just turn the radio up and bawl my eyes out, I never knew life would be this horrible. Especially with how my husband turned out. I never suspected as a teen that I would grow up to be in such a miserable place, and I'm so tired of it. I wish I could slap my husband back to normal but I just can't. 
I've suggested talking to a therapist but he just sweeps it under the rug. And yesterday, dear God, when I kindly suggested he look for a job he said, why? You're providing everything for us, why would I need to get one when you're doing so good? Good? This life is good? You sitting in your weak old boxes while smelling like fireball while I'm working my ass off is good? I'm on the verge of just getting the divorce papers and moving to my mom's until he signs it while I can afford to buy myself a place to live by myself. Maybe see where I screwed up in life to be here. I hope you enjoyed hearing these confessions, it's what the authors want to happen, for you to stop, and take your time, to hear them. I hope you join me again soon for more.